today we're going to cover breaching through a wall to gain access or egress from an environment that is potentially deadly. If you search on video online or have you see a lot of different methods. You know, they all work, but some of the pros and cons. Uh, yes, it's drywall, you can kick right through it very easily. Uh, but you got to think about where you may be. If this is a partial collapse, you're trapped, you're getting out. You don't know if this is a load bearing wall, a non load bearing wall, what it may be holding up. You start kicking at stuff, knocking out studs, it may bring a lot more danger right onto your location. You also see the technique that they talk about. You know, you may be exhausted and tired, regardless of if you have the axe or the halligan to do the pecking away. You kind of do a perforated line or you do this method and slowly go down so you don't expend as much energy. You know, that would work too. I'm not here saying what's right or wrong. Those are different techniques. And the one where you punch a single hole, put the axe or the halligan down or whatever tool you have, and you just make one straight rip down, straight rip on the other side. Make sure you clear left to right. Try to get as much space as you can from stud to stud. Um, things to look out for before you commence in the swim technique, is, which is uh, the technique we're going to teach. You have a sole plate on bottom. I've seen a lot of the recruits that I've put through. What seems to happen a lot of times is if you have trouble, that's where you're going to catch on this sole plate, especially on your high pressure connection. Uh, so as you're going through and you're turning, if something catches, don't try to smash through there. A lot of times it'll catch on the stud, but usually it's down here on the sole plate as you're turning back around. You're not going to break that and you don't want to. So just pause, back up a couple inches, lift your hips up, and commence going through. Also, on some of these walls, when, when they build them, they'll have fire breaks or some other supports. And I'm not sure what the, the building code is and where they're supposed to go, but they're usually going to be about where somebody's standing waist level, to nail it in here, lift the other one up higher, other one down lower. So depending on how tall you are, and how big you may be, you may encounter that if you have to move up and down. And you also have to consider talking about codes, if this was even built to code. You know, you could have various widths of stud placement. It's probably going to be beneficial to you just to get into the habit of, since you don't know the environment that's on the other side of this wall, if indeed you are in a confined space or partial collapse, and you're not simply making an entrance to perhaps rescue a medical patient on the other side of an apartment door that's locked and it can't be gotten into. If it's an unknown area, you know, you can bust a small hole in there and take a peek. If it's a dangerous environment with smoke, or whatever, you're not going to be able to see anything. You may feel a bunch of heat, in which case, you know, that could be worse. And once you do open up the area, go ahead and put your axe through. As you see over here, we'll demonstrate pretend this is taken down. You know, you can just put your axe through. Remember, you won't be able to see here. You can just drop it like that. You know, a lot of times people sleep. Well, you may be sitting, that may be one little layer of an attic because you're on a second story and there's the attic and you don't know where you are and you just went through and that's, I don't know, some particle board sitting there that they have their Christmas boxes on. You have a good draw, you know it's good. You put your axe to the side. I like leaving it there as I move so I can grab it when I reach my first hand through it. I don't lose my axe in the dark. So make sure you sound it and that you're, uh, you know you're moving into a good environment. We'll start over here on the left. So one of the techniques they talked about is I don't know what they mean by getting tired because, like I said, it's drywall. I'll show you the one I like because you're going to use the whole surface area and you might as well use everything you have. So if this was the first one, as it went through, just turn it as much as you can and bust out. It's kind of like pulling ship by You're going to turn it get as much as you can. That didn't take any energy. And I'll just say, just turn the thing over. And this was actually screwed in here. So that's one technique, and like I said, as you would do this, you check, boom, and go. One other technique that I've seen, and you know, might as well give it up for you to have as an option, is to make poke throughs to look through, and also if you want to do the technique to put your, your tool down and go through. Put your hole through, you bring it down. So as, this, as your tool would be through there, you jam it down. There's no wall on the other side, but what it would do 
you'd bring it straight down as far as you can and you'd rip straight down and in theory and it does work it just tears it to there and then you can finish cutting it out but like I said it's drywall depending on your environment if you have to stay down lower that may be something beneficial so I don't know that there's a right or wrong with method it's just drywall uh, showing how to use the space this adds in spike in technique if you're you know just going to do the whole hole first break they go through like that and then you can bust through and get it I still like using the more surface area and once you go through you can go right or left to see where you are on the stud so that's the next there. there's your stud so you know it just go this way I'm very strong I, I worked out a lot so I tore the whole wall out <laughs>